Okay, hi folks, this is part four in a series of videos looking at similarities and differences between questions on particular key areas in the advanced higher physics past papers. So, this time round it's rotational dynamics, or torque and moment of inertia if you'd rather. It's usually question three in the paper, so let's start off by having a look at question three in the 2017 paper. So a student uses a solid uniform circular disc of radius 290 millimeters and mass 0.4 kilograms as part of an investigation into rotational motion and we have to calculate the moment of inertia of the disc about the axis shown in figure 3 area. Now, the relationships for moment of inertia are not on the main page of relationships, they're right at the back of the relationship sheet where it says additional relationships. And underneath all the maths ones there you can see moment of inertia. And we want a disc about its centre for this one. So it's a half mr squared. Remember different objects will have a different moment of inertia depending on the distribution of mass about their axis of rotation. So, for a solid disc, it's I equals a half mr squared. And if we substitute in everything we know, the mass was 0.4 kilograms, and the radius is 290 millimetres, that's 0 0.29 metres. And don't forget to square the radius. And if you do that on your calculator, you get an answer of 0 0.17 kilogram meter squared and that's rounded to two sig figs because the numbers in the question are to two sig figs and there's the sqa marking instructions it's a bog standard three marker one mark for equation substitution and the final answer with the correct units all right the disc is now mounted horizontally on an axle and the axle is on a frictionless bearing and a thin cord is wound around a stationary pulley which is attached to the axle and the moment of inertia of the pulley and the axle are negligible the pulley's got a radius of 7.5 millimeters and a force of 8 newtons is applied to the free end of the cord and for part one we have to calculate the torque applied to the pulley so straight to your relationship sheet and pick out the torque relationship tau equals fr watch your symbols here make sure it's a tau and not a capital t and the applied force was eight newtons and the radius is the radius of the pulley which is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters and if you do that on your calculator you'll get an answer of 0 0.06 newton meters and that all looks good with the SQA marking instructions, although if you look closely, they're using a capital T for torque. Back in 2017, a capital T was used for torque, although now, make sure you use a tau, Greek letter tau. And then part two, calculate the angular acceleration produced by this torque. So we're looking for a relationship with angular acceleration in it, and torque as well. So it's going to be tau equals I alpha, where I is the moment of inertia of the disc. So sub in what we know, the torque 0 0.06. The moment of inertia of the disc we worked out in the previous part of the question. And we're also told that the moment of inertia of the pulley and the axle can be considered to be negligible. So the only thing we need to put in for the moment of inertia is the moment of inertia of the disc. And we worked that out in part A, which was 0.017 kilogram meter squared. So subbing that in and then rearranging for alpha gives us an answer of 3.5 radians per second squared. Watch your units there. It's an angular acceleration. And there's the MIs. Once again, I'm using a capital T for torque. Make sure you use the Greek letter tau, which is now on your relationship sheet. And then three part B, part three, the cord becomes detached from the pulley after 0 0.25 meters has unwound. And by considering the angular displacement of the disc, determine its angular velocity when the cord becomes detached. Now this part of the question is worth 5 marks, so usually that involves 
two calculations then that leads you to the final answer. So where are we going to start here? Well, with all this talk of angular displacements and angular velocities and linear displacements, we are back to our rotational equations of motion here. And the first thing we've got to do is we have to convert the 0.25, which is a linear displacement, into an angular displacement. So we're looking for the relationship that links the two. And that would be S equals R theta. So a linear displacement is 0.25. The radius, now it's the radius of the pulley that the cord is wound on. So that's the 7.5 millimetres, or 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And then we can rearrange that and find theta. So theta will be equal to 0.25 divided by 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And if you do that in your calculator, it'll give you an answer of 33.33333, or 3 recurring. Now, that's not a final answer, so let's just keep that in brackets just now. And let's not round it, because what we're looking for is the angular velocity. So let's write down our five quantities that are in our angular equations of motion, and then we'll fill in what we know. So the angular displacement is 33.3 recurring. Remember, we're not rounding that. And the disk starts from rest, so its initial angular velocity is zero, and we have just worked out the angular acceleration, it's 3.5 radians per second squared. And we now have enough information there that we can work out what the final angular velocity is. So the equation of motion we require is omega squared is omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. Omega naught is zero, so it becomes 2 times 3.5 times the 33.3 recurring, which should still be in your calculator. And then don't forget to square root your answer to get omega, and omega will be equal to 15 radians per second. Watch your units there, and again we're rounding to two sig figs. And here's the SQE marking instructions. The first two marks there for realising you have to convert the 0.25 metres into the angular displacement. Now there's no mark for actually working out the angular displacement, but you do have to substitute your working into the equation of motion that we're then using to work out the angular velocity. That's pretty tricky. Five mark questions are always pretty tricky. It's not a straightforward calculation. That's why it doesn't say calculate in the question. The word determine is used. Watch out for that. Okay, three part C. In a second experiment, the discs now get an angular velocity of 12 radians per second. And the student drops a small 25 gram cube vertically onto the disc, and the cube sticks to the disc. And we're told the centre of mass of the cube is 220 millimetres from the axis of rotation, and that's all shown with those values in figure 3c and we have to calculate the angular velocity of the system immediately after the cube was dropped onto the disc. Well this is a conservation of angular momentum question where the total angular momentum of the system before the cube is dropped will be equal to the total angular momentum of the system after the cube is dropped onto the disc and of course that's in the absence of any external torques. So Initially, before the cube is dropped, all we have is the moment of inertia of the disc and the angular velocity of the disc. But then afterwards, we're going to have the moment of inertia of the disc times its new angular velocity, we'll call it omega 2, plus the moment of inertia of the cube and its angular velocity. Now, omega 2 will be the same for both the cube and the disc. So we can simplify that to I1 plus I2 times omega 2. And it's omega 2 that we're looking for, the angular velocity after the cube is dropped. Now, we need the moment of inertia of the cube. And it's a little point mass. And we can work out its moment of inertia from mR squared. Its mass was 25 grams. And it's at a radius of 220 millimetres from the axis of rotation. So if we work out the moment of inertia of the cube, you're going to get an answer of 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3 
kilogram meter squared. Now, again, we're not asked for that, so I'm keeping that bracketed just now, but I'm going to substitute it in to the next line in my calculation. We also need the moment of inertia of the disc, which we got right way back at the start of the question. Sometimes you've got to scroll way back two or three pages here, so that's 0 0.017. And now we've got everything we need there. So I1 is 0 0.017. The initial angular velocity was 12, because we're told that in the first line in part C. So let's sub that in. And then we just add together the moment of inertia of the disc, 0 0.017 plus the moment of inertia of the cube, which was 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3, and that will all be times omega 2, and it's omega 2 that we're looking for, the angular velocity after the cube has been dropped. So let's rearrange all of that to get omega 2. So omega 2 will be equal to 0.017 times 12, divided by the total moment of inertia of the disk and the cube, and then if you do that on your calculator, your final angular velocity, which should be less than 12, works out to be 11 radians per second, rounded to two significant figures. That's another five mark question, so let's see how those marks are split up. The first two for showing how you would determine the moment of inertia of the cube, and then the other three marks are for the correct use of the moment of inertia of the cube and the disc, and the calculation of the final angular velocity. That's pretty tricky. Remember, if you are revising using past papers, don't be afraid to have the marking instructions open beside you. Don't just copy them, but certainly use them as a reference as you work through the paper. That's quite a big question. 19 marks, in fact. Although it's really a combination of rotational dynamics and angular motion. And all of those 19 marks are calculations. No explanations in there. Hmm. But let's have a look at another one just to see how it compares. Let's have a look at the 2019 paper. And again, it's question three on rotational dynamics. A gymnast in a straight position rotates around a high bar, as shown in figure 3a, and the mass of the gymnast is 63 kilograms. And with their arms extended, the total length of the gymnast is 2.1 meters. And the gymnast is rotating with an angular velocity of 7.9 radians per second. And with their arms extended, the gymnast can be approximated as a uniform rod. Using this approximation, show that the moment of inertia of the gymnast around the bar is 93 kilogram meter squared. Well, if the gymnast is approximated as a uniform rod, then we need the moment of inertia of a rod that's rotating about its end. So if we go to the relationship sheet and we scroll all the way to the end, we will find on the additional relationships page, down at the bottom there is the moment of inertia of various objects, and we are looking for a rod about its end. There it's there, I equals one third ML squared. So let's write that down. Remember, this is a show question, so you've got to show your relationship as it appears on the relationship sheet. Substitute all your values in. So it's one third of the mass, which was 63 kilograms, times the length, which was 2.1 meters. And don't forget to square it. And if you do that on your calculator, that will give you an answer, which rounds to 93 kilogram meters squared. And that's what we have to show. 3 part B, the gymnast now makes a pike position by bending in the waist, and this change of position causes the moment of inertia of the gymnast to decrease to 62 kilogram meter squared. So originally it was 93 kilogram meter squared, and it has gone down to 62 kilogram meter squared, and we have to explain why making a pike position results in a decrease in the moment of inertia of the gymnast. Well, their mass isn't going to change, but their mass will be distributed closer to the axis of rotation. So they're not a uniform rod anymore, so don't be tempted to write that the gymnast will have a shorter length. In fact, if we look at the marking instructions, the only answer that's acceptable is that the mass is now closer to the axis of rotation.
Okay, so the A part 2, by considering conservation of angular momentum, determine the angular velocity of the gymnast in the pike position. Well, the total angular momentum before is equal to the total angular momentum afterwards in the absence of any external torques. So let's sub in everything we know. The initial moment of inertia of the gymnast was 93 kilogram meters squared. And the initial angular velocity was 7.9 radians per second. And that will be equal to our new moment of inertia, which is 62 times our new angular velocity, omega 2. So omega 2 will be 93 times 7.9 divided by 62. And if you do that on your calculator, that will give you an answer of 12 radians per second. So the angular velocity has increased because the moment of inertia has decreased. Let's have a look at the marking instructions. So we've got a statement of conservation of angular momentum for the first mark, um, one mark for the substitution and one mark for the final answer with the correct units and again to two significant figures. So a much smaller question in this paper, nothing about torque but still being assessed on moment of inertia and conservation of angular momentum. Usual story then, do lots of past papers, have a look at lots of examples and hopefully you'll see something similar to what will crop up in your final exam. That's it for this one, in the next video we'll have a look at gravitation. See you in the next one.